now begin the final part of Lecture 30 on Cardiovascular Defects. We start with a uh, summary of some of the things we've mentioned before. Uh, explain the following malformations, uh, patent ductus arteriosus, we'll see this again, and the coarctation of the aorta. Uh, these actually are parts of the lecture we're beginning now. The ductus arteriosus is that communication between the aorta and the left pulmonary artery. Uh, we described its significance in the, the fetal circulation. It gets obliterated functionally shortly after birth and morphologically during the first uh, to the third post-embryonic months uh, as a neonate. Uh, if it uh, is not closed, then it is uh, referred to as a patent ductus arteriosus. The aortic lumen uh, in the coarctation of the aorta uh, will uh, below the origin of the left subclavian artery will be narrowed. That's the, what the term coarctation means. So we start uh, with another uh, defect first, the tetralogy of Fallot from figure 1433 in the text. This is a syndrome that uh, has actually four defects within it. So there's pulmonary stenosis, ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta or dextral position of the aorta, and right ventricular hypertrophy. We'll explain these as we proceed through these next two illustrations. So here, uh, again, we see the uh, tetralogy, the four, pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, uh, uh, overriding aorta, or dextral position of the aorta, and the ventricular septal defect. So here we can see some of the blood flow, uh, and this will help to explain uh, the uh, right ventricular hypertrophy. With the uh, narrowing of the infundibulum, this funnel-shaped uh, uh, portion leading into the pulmonary trunk, uh, the stenosis of this area, infundibular stenosis, of course causes a tremendous amount of afterload or back pressure for the right ventricle to push against it. In addition, there can be a pulmonary valve stenosis, so uh, you know a tremendous amount of resistance to output of the right ventricle. So the overriding aorta uh, receives that blood, and of course the pressure will be greater on the aortic side of the um, truncus arteriosus, and of course that will be patent, uh, and that's how the pulmonary circulation is achieved. Uh, so this isn't necessarily terminal, it does need repair, uh, but um, obviously you're getting mixture of right and left side blood going through the systemic circulation, uh, so it isn't the, uh, the best situation, and the cardiac function is compromised uh, quite significantly. Here we see in summary then the, uh, the four uh, characteristic abnormalities, the pulmonary stenosis, uh, as mentioned, the ventricular septal defect, shown here, the overriding aorta, shown here, and then the uh, pulmonary, excuse me, the right ventricular hypertrophy. So this is a cyanotic uh, defect. So we said there would be mixing of the arterial, uh, um, the deoxygenated and the oxygenated blood through the overriding aorta. So there uh, will be a, um, a mixture of oxygenated and deoxygenated blood showing up systemically, producing the characteristic bluish color of uh, someone with a low oxygen saturation, and that is cyanosis. So it's a cyanotic defect. So a newborn infant was referred to a pediatrician because of the blue color of his skin. So again, it's pediatrician, not neonatologist. So we know this is uh, a bit after birth, not immediate. So cyanosis uh, was observed. Uh, ultrasound examination was ordered to confirm the preliminary diagnosis. So in the tetralogy of Fallot, there are four cardiac abnormalities. What are they? Of course, we just summarized them. What is the one most obvious sign? Uh, what is one of the most obvious signs of the tetralogy of Fallot? What radiographic technique might be used to confirm a tentative diagnosis of this type of congenital heart disease? And what do you think would be the main aim of therapy in these cases? So the answers to these questions are in this slide. So the tetrad, four, of cardiac abnormalities present in the tetralogy of Fallot is 
pulmonary stenosis, ventricular septal defect, overriding aorta, and right ventricular hypertrophy. Angiocardiography or ultrasonography uh, could be used to reveal the malpositioned aorta, uh, straddled, straddling the ventricular septal defect, and the degree of pulmonary stenosis. So cyanosis occurs because of the shunting of the unsaturated blood. Uh, however, it may not be present at birth, as we had said. The main aim of therapy is to improve the oxygenation of the blood in the infant, usually by surgical correction of the pulmonary stenosis and closure of the ventricular septal uh, defect, uh, thereby um, establishing the single arterial output uh, from each of the ventricles through the surgical reparation. Coarctation of the aorta is next. We'd mentioned it before. Coarctation means constriction. So it is in the aorta itself, and again, anytime you have a, uh, a re constriction, there's a greater resistance to output of the ventricle, so we should predict uh, a ventricular uh, hypertrophy. Uh, the location and length may vary. It's more common in males than females, and it's usually found near the ductus arteriosus. There can be a genetic cause, for example, Tur Turner syndrome, the XO um, uh, genotype, or there can be environmental factors that can bring this about in development. Uh, next is the patent ductus arteriosus, more common in females than males, and it's commonly associated with maternal rubella infection, so virus, uh, measles virus. Uh, it commonly occurs in premature infants, and it requires surgical reparation. So here's case 14-2. Female infant was born normally after a pregnancy complicated by a rubella infection. We already know what we're going to see, right? Uh, during the first trimester of pregnancy. So that's the most uh, key or uh, um, the window of greatest susceptibility to uh, developmental uh, abnormalities due to this viral infection. So she had congenital cataracts and congenital heart disease. A radiograph of the uh, infant's chest at three weeks showed generalized cardiac enlargement and with some increase in pulmonary vascularity. So the left ventricular uh, hypertrophy, but also if you clog up the left ventricle, it backs up into the lungs, so pulmonary vascularity with the pulmonary hypertension, and you also create a greater load, um, excuse me, uh, resistance to output of the right ventricle so you can get a generalized ventricular hypertrophy uh, and very light, likely uh, congestive uh, heart disease, uh, depending upon the chronicity of it. So what congenital uh, cardiovascular anomaly is commonly associated with maternal rubella, rubella during early pregnancy and what probably caused the cardiac enlargement? So here is the answer to those questions. Here are the answers to those questions. Patent ductus arteriosus is the most common cardiovascular anomaly associated with the maternal rubella uh, infection during early pregnancy. When the ductus arteriosus is patent, the aortic blood is shunted into the pulmonary arteries. Uh, in extreme cases, uh, one half to two thirds of the left ventricular output may be shunted through the PDA, and this uh, extra work for the heart results in cardiac enlargement. I believe I was in error in the previous slide. Uh, I'll leave it for you to correct uh, my statements. Let's go back uh, and point it out. I, of course, was carrying over the coarctation uh, that would have created the, the greater resistance uh, to the left ventricle when I was talking about patent ductus arteriosus, uh, which is most commonly associated with maternal uh, rubella infection. So in this case, what we have is left ventricular output to the, uh, the pulmonary circulation, so a higher pressure of uh, pulmonary circulation producing the pulmonary vascularity. So hopefully you were able to pick up on my error uh, and uh, follow through with the correction very effectively. So this ends our discussion of the cardiovascular uh, development of the cardiovascular system.